Hello everyone. Just having a few tech issues here. So just let me know that you can hear me, that you can see me, that it's all okay. Visually and audibly. Welcome back to day four. Hello everyone who is joining. Just having some funny things happen with my, um, with my computer. I'm going to push the computer back a little bit. It's come up really close to me. There we go. So I'm just going to pop in here. Hello, so hello everyone ah, who is joining. Ah, that's awkward. <laughs> All right. I hate when that happens. Okay, great. I can see everything loud and clear. Awesome. Welcome back to day four. We have had such an amazing, amazing week and I'm so, so excited and grateful and thrilled and just highly vibing that you have all joined me live for this five day challenge. It's been a really powerful container that we have all created together and that's everyone's energy. I'm going to push my computer back a little bit more because it feels like it's really close. There we go. So you can hear me, all good. So I first of all, before we dive into the, the work today that I have planned, the processes that I have planned, I wanted to check in with you guys and to see how you're all feeling. So we have, we're on day four, so we're almost two thirds of the way through this challenge. We have looked at the sales shadow and we have cleared that with tapping. And I know, Ange, I'm not sure if you're live, but I know, Ange, that you have said that this has brought up some stuff for you from some big stuff. So we're going to talk about that, about what to do and, you know, big stuff, especially shadow work brings up stuff like this. But we've really looked at the shadow and we've seen how is it that our sales shadow and our money shadow, oh, thank you, darling. I'm at my parents' house in Canberra, so it's a bit of a different backdrop. <laughs> um, but we're going to look today to see, you know, first of all, how is it that the sales shadow has actually kept us small, has kept us holding ourselves back, has kept us from, you know, really shining for fear of judgment, for all of that. And then on Tuesday, we looked at activating the sales queen. So we did a beautiful process where we actually held space for her to drop in, to drop into our system and for her to actually enact herself through us. And of course, remembering that she is a part of us. She is a deep, deep part of us. But we're working with this from an archetypal energy perspective, which I think is actually quite a beautiful way to step into this sort of empowerment. And tell me if you agree. I've just loved connecting with the archetype of the sales queen. And then yesterday we looked at aligned action. So what is it that we have to do? This is the big piece that is often missing for a lot of people, a lot of women in business, right? We can get really caught up in, you know, the healing work and the energetics. And I love that. That's my background. And I can live there forever if I allow myself to. But actually coming into this space of taking consistent act, consistent action, being able to be okay with commitment and focus, and remembering that it's actually through commitment and focus that we are able to facilitate freedom. So that was a really powerful conversation that we had yesterday. And then I invited you to take some action to start getting into this space of pushing up against your edges, pushing up against the edges of what feels comfortable for you, what feels, you know, what feels uncomfortable. And I can see that I've frozen over here. So I'm just gonna, can you help? Okay, give me a, um, a thumbs up or a like if you are still with me live. Okay. Beck, can you, are you still with me live, darling? Because I can see on my phone that I've frozen. Let me know. I'll just write in a little comment here. Am I still? Okay, good. There we go. All right. So we've got some love hearts. I'm just going to keep going. Maybe that was my, um, maybe that was my phone. Anyway, so Beck, no, it's okay. If you haven't watched day three, that's totally okay. Essentially, it was an invitation to take action. All right. An invitation to start taking action, to start to explore what it feels like to push into what I call courage, right? This is courageous action that we have to take. If we're not taking courage. Jason. Well, then what are we doing? We're kind of stagnating, right? We are spinning our wheels and we're going to be talking about this today. So, okay, it's all good. All right. Am I, am I frozen? Okay, all good. Okay, good stuff. I, I don't know. It's wigging me out here. I've got a frozen screen. All righty. So, so essentially, you know, whenever we are encouraged to start taking action and for some reason, you know, it can bring up a lot of resistance, 
I think I got lippy on my teeth. No, I'm all good. So it can bring up a lot of resistance for people. And so what I wanted to talk about today was essentially how we can unleash your queen's superpower. And I think that this is an incredibly powerful superpower that we're going to uncover because once we learn how to work with this in a really powerful way, then we there is nothing that is stopping us. So drum roll, please. Dun, 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 dun. Your queen's superpower is that she has learned how to slay sales sabotage. She has learned the art of slaying her sales sabotage. And that's what we're talking about today, the big sales sabotage. Now, sales sabotage comes in lots and lots of different forms. Resistance is a huge one. It's actually like the core of sabotage, right? It's resistance. So we're gonna be talking about how I like to approach resistance, how I like to move through it, some of my tools that I use myself and with my clients as well. I'm just gonna scroll to make sure I'm not missing any comments. Um, and, and how we can really powerfully learn how to create a relationship with this energy of resistance or sabotage or whatever you like to call it so that we can continue to keep taking courageous action. So first of all, what is sabotage? What is resistance? Excuse me. We'll talk about it from the resistance the resistance term because I really like that term. I think sabotage, it's, it has a lot of weight to it and I do use that a lot as well, but it can have, a, it's like it can be quite a heavy word. So we're going to bring both in today. But essentially I see resistance as it's, it's your nervous system or your subconscious mind trying to keep you safe by keeping you in the old paradigm, by keeping you from expanding your, your you know, from growing your wings, spreading your wings, right? So resistance really comes from the old outdated coping mechanisms or belief mechanisms that tells us that what we are trying to do by growing our business, by being more visible, by charging money, by, you know, sales is unsafe. This is a very outdated coping mechanism. And this is where sabotage and sales sabotage comes from. So I wanted to cover the three sales sabotages that I see as being the most common for myself, for my clients. These are the ones that always pop up for me. And we're going to be doing some process work around how we can actually start to really ease into that and release that because, or slay that. This is the energy of the sales queen, right? She wields her energy. She wields her potency and she knows how to wield her potency when it comes to sales sabotage. Your, your inner sales queen does not deal with sales sabotage, all right? She knows how to move through it and she doesn't let her, she doesn't let it stop her from keeping her eye on the target, from keeping her eye on the prize, right? So I'm just going to pause a little bit here just to make sure that I'm still live because I'm still frozen on my phone. Guys, give me a like, a like or a thumbs up if you can still see me and hear me all good just before I kick off from here. Okay. Oh, I'm not seeing any. Am I live? <laughs> this is so weird. Maybe if I jump over here and come bear with me one minute guys the internet in canberra is so bad okay all right good stuff okay cool so the first sales massage and this is such a big big thing okay this is such a big thing for women and this impacts every single area of our life it doesn't just impact our sales so the first sales sabotage is resistance to receiving resistance to receiving money resistance to receiving support, resistance to receiving pleasure, to receiving joy, to receiving love, to receiving ease. Keep going, you're live. Beautiful, thanks. Resistance to receiving is actually one of the biggest, biggest things that I see in my work one-to-one -one with clients and that I have experienced and I still have to, have to process this quite regularly, how to break through the resistance to receiving. So when I talk about resistance to receiving, I actually look at it from a chakra perspective. So in the second chakra, this is where we are opening to receive or we are closing ourselves off, okay? So this is also the energy of creativity, the energy of sexuality, the energy of potency. There's so much that brews in the second chakra. 
And if we are shutting down in our second chakra, that's having a big, big impact on our ability to sell in an open, authentic way, on our ability to, you know, put a price tag on our work that is that is of the set of the right value of the services that we are charging. And it's also it impacts us in our in every single area, right? Because we are, if I believe how we receive one thing is how we receive everything. So how are you receiving compliments? How are you receiving acknowledgements? How do you allow yourself to receive pleasure? How do you allow your, and I mean like truly receive it, not just, you know, not just go through the motions. And I mean all sorts of pleasure, not just sexual pleasure, all sorts of pleasure. But how do you actually allow yourself to be super present and to actually open energetically to receive it? Because if we are not opening to receive all of these beautiful, glorious things, like pleasure and joy and love and support, then we're manifesting lots of opportunities to work really, really hard to prove to everyone just how hard we are working. We might even get sick. We might even fall back again into that self-sacrificing paradigm that we spoke about yesterday, I think. And we are manifesting lots of opportunities to do all of that and no opportunity to receive the benefit, the money, the pleasure, the ease, the joy, the excitement, the love. So it's such a big, big, powerful thing. And look, there's so much in this topic, right? So we're going to spend like 10, 15 minutes, but I could actually spend weeks looking, and I have spent weeks with clients looking at this, you know, learning how to overcome your resistance to receiving. So two things Two emotions, I have mentioned this, but I'm going to mention it again. Two emotions that are very important to look at when we are talking about resistance to receiving is guilt and shame. So if you have any guilt or shame in your system around building your business, around charging money, around going live, around you know, putting your commitment into your business, your focus into your business, this is true as well for this. If there's any guilt or if there's any shame that you're feeling around being seen, around charging, around working with people who maybe don't have the money, that's a big one as well. Like I feel guilty about charging people because I have this perception in my head that they can't, that they can't afford it. That's going to immediately and on an energetic level block our ability to receive, block our second chakra from being open. So I'm going to pause here and I want to ask you, what's your experience with this? And this is, like I said, it's a huge topic. So what's your experience with receiving, with allowing yourself to receive money, love, joy, pleasure? And you know, when I'm talking, hi, Melissa, honey. And when I'm talking about receiving, I'm often, I often think about my little four-year-old, right, who just allows himself, he is so present in the moment, you know, and when he is experiencing something that he loves, he is like, he receives it with every single cell, every single cell. He is, you know, he, he smells a rose and you just see his body, like the ripples of joy go down the back of his spine. And I, I'm always reminded when I look at him of this, this idea, this concept, this energy of receiving and how often it is that I can be so blocked in allowing myself to receive the moment, in allowing myself to receive support, in allowing myself to receive joy and love. So even though we're talking about sales and business, you can see that this is something where, you know, your life is a mirror. Yeah, your sales is a mirror for what's happening on the inside. Your relationship is a mirror for what's happening on the inside. Your, your money, your finances is a mirror for what's happening on the inside. And our ability to open up and to receive the world and everything that it, it offers us has a massive impact on our sales queen, on the energy of our sales queen and on our ability to comfortably and confidently sell. So... I am looking here. Melissa says, when you are open to receive, it is limitless. It really is. And, and you know, it is one of these things as well that we are always only bound by our perception. So what we perceive as being enough or appropriate or correct or right, what we perceive, is a, it's, it's massive. That's what we're going to experience. 
So our perception is literally, this is the thing that binds us, our ability to perceive what is possible. Once we push beyond our perception, what we think is possible into new and expanded areas, then we start to see, wow, you know, I was actually only bound by what I believed was possible. So I'm just going to have a look at this. Donna, I had so many issues with this last year. I had, a, I had an awesome therapist to help. Now I have awareness on my triggers. Okay. So I want to ask you, how has that impacted your business and your sales? And working through that, has that impacted your business and your sales? I'd love to know the answer to that. So the other thing when talking about receiving as well is it's important to look at the nervous system component. So the nervous system is actually, it's becoming a lot more recognized, but in many cases, it's actually the missing link for people, for business women, for business owners, for everyone really, when we're expanding out into higher levels of leadership, when we're expanding into higher levels of impact, when we're wanting to hold more energetically to receive it, we have to be able to actually receive it. And then we have to be able to hold it as well, to hold it in our container. Otherwise, what happens is for, from a financial perspective, you see people who win the lotto and then a year later, they've spent all the money, right? Or people who manifest an incredible relationship with a loving, open, kind-hearted partner, but they can't allow themselves to receive it and to hold it. And so they sabotage the relationship. This happens in business all the time where, you know, we open up to receive more money and more clients. This also looks like hitting an upper limit. We open up to receive more in our business and then we hit an upper limit or, or um, you know, the glass ceiling as they also call it. And then suddenly we rebound, we, we pull, you know, we take our hands off the rails. This is something that I've experienced that I do when I'm breaking through into a new, into a new level. I will take on lots of clients and it's something I have to be really aware of, take on lots of clients and then take my hands off the reins from a marketing perspective. I haven't done this in, a, in about it in about six to 12 months, actually. So, so I'll get really busy and then I'll be like, great, I can, I can, you know, have a victory lap and I'll take my hands away from the marketing and working on my business. And as a result, you know, come two months, three months later, suddenly I feel like I have all this catch up to do. So I'm just going to have a look here. I, di I did nothing with my business until I dealt with it. Powerful. Okay, so that right there says just how powerful this is. Amazing. Kelly, I 100% experienced this resistance as I'm new to sales and business. I'm so passionate and believe in my products. Let me just click that again. Believe in my products, but totally shut down as soon as it comes to closed sales or the slightest resistance to the cost. And there's so much in that as well, right? So your relationship with money we're touching on this in this five day challenge, but this is one major core component of my business alchemy framework because it, your relationship with money dictates how you sell, you know, and your relationship with sales dictates how you receive money and how you grow your money and how you actually, you know, expand into, into greater capacities of, of wealth. So, you know, it's a very, very powerful inquiry to go down to look at, you know, what have I, what do I make money mean? You know, a great misconception out there is that money has an energy. And I only really coined, like I only really actually this dropped in for me only a few months ago because I was that person that says it's just an energy, right? It's an exchange. It's an energy. But actually money, money is neutral. Money, the en there is really no money to energy. It only has the money that the energy that we give it. And what there's a few misconceptions, especially in the spiritual arena, that says that, um, you know, you have to respect money and you have to love money and you have to, you know, create a respectful relationship with it. And I want to challenge that because if we go down that path, then we're actually, you know, have to respect it. I have to, we're actually putting money on a pedestal. So that can be a little bit controversial. Okay, I'm going to open that up because I know there's a lot of people out there who disagree with that. But when I really started to feel into this and to notice energetically how this shifted for me and for my clients, when I started to go and what I teach to my clients as well, when I started to go, you know what, money, it is just dollars and cents and digital. That's all it is. It's a piece of paper or it's a coin, right? But we give it so much energy. We give it so much power. We actually give our power to it. We are ruled by it. For many soulful entrepreneurs, this is, 
huge, huge growth in this, in this component right here because we have so much shame around charging and we have we make money mean so much and we make it mean so much when we don't have it or we you know we don't get the sale like it's you know it's a direct reflection of our sense of self-worth there's so much into it in in that okay so i'm going to keep on reading and we're going to be talking about this today agree the resistance to the cost can can get me too if anyone says oh i can't afford it i shut down i've started to look at my at money as energy instead of a physical product so i want to invite you to consider that beck so to consider if you if if you're if you're buying into this belief that money is an energy and it is to a certain extent the energy comes from the energy that we give to it it's when we consider money to be to have its own energy right when we give our, all of our power to it when we allow it to kind of you know drag us around by the nose that's when we are actually we're actually doing a great disservice for our business and we're doing a great disservice for our for our wealth our capacity to build money so i've started to create a relationship now with money where it's like money works for me i don't work for it it works for me and i get to say how it goes and it's like a bit of an assertive relationship you know, and this is the sales queen energy is very much like that, right? She's very empowered when it comes to this. And so she, you know, she understands that the relationship that she has with money is one that she dictates. It's on her terms. So I want to know, like, I want to just check in with you and see how does that land? I'm going to have some water. Because that's a big, it's a big, um, I think it's a big misconception. And when it comes to receiving and resistance to receiving money, you know, like what are you making it mean when someone says I can't afford it? Often, Beck, I'll give you a little insight into the work, into my approach to that. If someone says to you I, ha I can't afford it, there's a few things there. The first one is that you likely haven't, haven't, haven't built the gap for the client, for your client, right? You haven't built powerfully enough where the client is now, where they're in pain, and then where you can take them to the value, the you know the the ROI, and the ROI doesn't necessarily have to be a financial ROI. You know, there's return on time, there's return on health investment, there's return on you know energy. There's there's so many different forms of ROI that potentially you're not holding space for that clear enough. So you know, let me have, have let that sink in, and I'll have a look here. Not so much, not so much money. I have been looking at receiving for my knowledge as an energy exchange, so not always monetary gain. So have you been doing a um, like a bartering swap with your with your uh, with your clients? Let me know. So when it comes to resistance to receiving anything, this is often a, you know it's very powerful to look at it through the lens of your. It's almost like your self-worth meter. Hi, Nadine. Welcome, darling. Yay. It's like you can think of it as a reflection of your self-worth meter or your, um, your self-worth set point. Your self-worth and your deserving set point. They're kind of two sides to the same coin. So I always think, you know, the, the, more, I can, the more I can work on my capacity to claim my worth, and this is my inherent, like my innumerable worth my the worth that my soul that my higher self knows is actually there's no number that can be placed on that the more I ease into this and ease into raising my capacity for self-worth raising my capacity for self-love raising my capacity for self-compassion self-trust my capacity for deservingness the more I open up to receive so there's a direct correlation and this is where this, the self-worth and the money component comes in, all right? So your capacity to open more into or to ease more into self-love and self-worth and, you know, all of the beautiful words that I just spoke about will have, a direct, will have a direct impact on your capacity to receive, to receive love, to receive support, to receive joy, to receive pleasure, to receive ease we don't have to make it hard for ourselves yeah and we often make it really really we make things a lot harder than they have to be this goes back to old school programming generally from you know it is a very paternal programming but it, i've seen it come up in the maternal line as well 
around having to work hard, having to have my career be a hard slog, you know, and then I can kind of jump onto this um, martyr train that says, look how hard I'm working, you know, look how hard I'm working and working really, really hard that I sacrifice in other areas of my life. I sacrifice my health, I sacrifice my relationships, I sacrifice my connection to myself. That's the old paradigm. We don't have to go down that path. It can be easy if we allow ourselves to receive it. So, yes, sort of, because I didn't have the mind frame of deserving. I'm challenging this this week because you're pushing me. <laughs> Definitely need to work on building the gap with clients. This has been an inner belief system blockage around my worth. Okay, so this is speaking directly to you, Beck. Perfect. So how do we raise our self-worth meter? That's a great question. And I always start with self-care. So how am I treating myself? How am I honoring my boundaries? Am I honoring my boundaries? Do I even have boundaries? Your boundaries, I believe, are an energetic representation of your capacity to align to your self-worth. You can think of boundaries as, you know, as um, sacred agreements with the world around you. You know, with your people, with the people around you, with um, other things like technology. Uh, this has had to, I have had, and I still struggle with this, you know, with putting, and no, I should reframe that, I'm learning how to be better with this, with um, putting in boundaries around my use of the, my use of uh, my computer and my phone, my boundaries with my work, boundaries with my time, boundaries with my family, yeah? So what's the, what's the, um, how do I distinguish between work and family time? And it's really hard when we work at home. It can be really hard, right? Because we can just duck off to the office and keep on plugging away. And that often, like when I really think about it, that's connected to that paternal got to work hard, got to work really, really hard. And if I don't work hard, I haven't earned it. So this, as you can see, like I always think of the onion, the uh, analogy of the onion, right? We have our core life themes or our core issues that we work through in life. And we peel back the one layer and we're like, okay, I've got this now. I'm, I'm good. And then something will happen. We'll come up against another upper limit. And then it's just, there it is again. And it's another opportunity to look at it probably through a different lens. So there's another layer. <laughs> and then, you know, we mustn't get into that, into the trap of being like, yeah, I've dealt with this now. As soon as I do that, there it is again, but it's in another layer, meaning it has a different context. It has different implications. I'm seeing it through a different lens. And every time I do that, every, la every time I peel back a layer, I, I learn something more about myself, right? So these... These things that we struggle with are actually there to teach us a huge amount. And often our, tr our struggles that we go through in our life are very directly related to our purpose and to the work that we end up doing with our clients. So give me a like or a thumbs up if you, if you really resonate with that as well. Okay, I'm going to have a sip of water. Monday four is quite a lot of talking. I'm starting to feel a little bit of a scratchy, scratchy throat. So resistance to receiving and, and releasing resistance to receiving, it's again, it's a lot to do with nervous system work as well. So all these different layers, right? Your nervous system and how stressed you are, how heightened your stress response is, has a massive impact on how you are allowing yourself to receive money, new clients, ease, joy, love, support, all of the things, right? So we need to also learn how to lower our stress, how to lower that fight, flight or freeze response, how to, how to get out of the, the lizard brain, right? How to turn off the amygdala, which is the, this almond or walnut shaped organ in the you know, part of our brain that is directly connected to fear, to the fear response, you know, to, to survival, to I am not safe in this environment right here, right now. And to my nervous system, it feels like I'm being chased by a tiger. Maybe I'm just about to click that red live button, but that's what's happening in my nervous system. I'm, I'm, I'm about to die. So we often, we need to remember that when we're talking about, you know, all of the things, all of the things that we've spoken about, receiving money, easing into new levels of visibility, you know, holding 
expanding our container to hold more wealth, to hold more pleasure, to hold more joy, to hold more ease. It is a nervous system thing just as much as it is an energetic thing, as it is an emotional thing. So there's so much there. So I'd love to check in with you. How's this feeling? What are you noticing? What are your patterns around receiving? Do you allow yourself to receive all of the things that we've spoken about easily? Or does it challenge you? And what does it challenge? Hi, Kirsten. Welcome. Alrighty. So as we're just, as we're sitting with that, I'm going to circle back around to resistance. So all of this is resistance, right? So when I asked you to jump into action, to really, you know, jump into a Facebook live. And so all of you guys who have done that, I'm so, so proud and so thrilled. Well done. And I know that for many of you, that was actually really nerve wracking. I remember the first time that I did a Facebook live and started to, you know, try to talk like this. And this is not just recording a video and uploading a video. I mean, going live with your audience, like the first few months, it was like, oh my God, like the nervous system, right? I'm in stress. I'm in survival. Like this isn't safe. It's not safe to do this. That's what's happening in a, in a, in an energy and a nervous system place from a, from a nervous system perspective but that's okay. All right. So your relationship to resistance is very, very powerful. And it's actually really, really powerful to be able to, it's like we, we are channeling the observer in this. All right. There's a big part of me that is like really afraid to do this. And there's also a part of me that's observing. It's the energy of light curiosity. Okay. I'm not going to attach to that lizard brain, right? That is there in survival going, oh my God, I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to be all the things. <laughs> but we're able to actually, and the more we do this, the more we're able, this, the more this, the easier this becomes, but we're able to actually observe how we are responding in that, in that environment. Hi, Joe, welcome. So what's happening for you when you're about to do something that pushes you right up against your comfort zone? whether it's go live and share a story that is really profound or whether that's jump on a sales call for the first time or heck, jump on a sales call for the 60th time. I still get a little bit nervous when I jump on a sales call, right? That's okay. It's fine. It's perfect. As long as we have a relationship with resistance that, that contributes to that, all right? So if we're judging resistance, if we're judging our sabotage patterns, if we're judging these parts of us that we don't like as being bad and wrong, that's when we're going to start to have problems with, our, with, with the resistance, with the sabotage, with things that keep us stuck, right? So I, loved, I love this analogy of welcoming, and it's parts work. You know, there's lots of different parts of us that make us up. And welcoming these different parts to the table. Okay, there's a part of me that is shit scared. Shit scared Sally. I like to name them. <laughs> Shit scared Sally, come on my love, pull up, a, pull up a chair and let's have a conversation. What are you afraid of? Okay, you're afraid of being, you're afraid of being judged. You're afraid of Auntie Sue jumping on and seeing your Facebook live and saying, who do you think you are to be shining so brightly, right? It's always something like this. It always comes back to a fear. And if we can learn how to dance with our fear, and how to actually be okay with it, how to dance with it, and how to engage it in a way that is really powerful, then we are, we are able to slay our sales sabotage. You know, we are really able to, to really sit with it and to, to, be, to be powerfully present with it and to not make it bad or wrong, to give it an opportunity to speak. So there's a beautiful journaling process that I've done with, I think there's a few of my clients who are on at the moment, that I've done with them and it's around, you know, engaging with these parts of you. So the first step is to name it, right? What am I feeling? What am I feeling right now? I'm feeling scared. I'm feeling lazy. I don't want to do it. I'm really tired. I want to go lie on the couch. I'm feeling frustrated. I shouldn't have to do this. Why do I have to do this? You can't make me. Maybe I'm feeling a bit rebellious. I don't want to do it. That sounds stupid. You know, Tash is telling me to jump on live and that's stupid. I don't want to do that. <laughs> So to name it and to actually, you know, be the observer and to bring that, that um, consciousness to it. So what is the response that's happening? What is the response? And then to actually engage with it. You might like to journal. You might like to do some visualizing. 
you know, but the more we reject it and pretend that it's not there, the more that actually pushes into our shadow. We push it into that cupboard. I visualize the shadow like a big cupboard that I stuff all my shit in and I shut the doors and I lock it and then I go, I'm not looking at that again. And then, you know, three hours later, I'm screaming at my child because actually, I shouldn't use that. I don't really scream. Okay, I sometimes scream. You know, I try not to scream. <laughs> Um, you know, it bubbles up in other ways. That's what I'm essentially trying to say is that it bubbles up in other areas. It's because we're avoiding it. It's because we're not looking at it. So when we can actually learn to engage with it and to be okay with it and to talk to it, what are you afraid of? Yeah. What are you afraid of? What are you trying to protect me from? That is the best question that you can ask your resistance habits. I'm trying to protect you from, and you know something that's come up for me a lot with, with my one-on-ones, it's this, um, this fear of annihilation, and that's fascinating. This is like really, really interesting. Uh, it's like if I take myself to this level of impact, take myself to this level of exposure, then I might be, in, I might be killed, I might be, I might be annihilated, I might be taken down, I might be stalked, I might be killed. I might be burnt. A lot of it, I feel, comes from the burning times, whether that's in our cellular DNA or whether there's past life experiences that we have that I'm sure probably all of us have experienced if we're doing this kind of work now. So in the past, whether that's an ancestral thing or not, when I tried to speak up and someone in my family tried to speak up and to shine and to be unique and different, they were severely taken down. They were killed, right? That's survival in a nutshell, yeah? So this is this, this new, like this uh, inquiry with our, with our um, resistance habits that can be very, very powerful. We can actually learn so much about ourselves from this level of inquiry. So I'm going to let that sink in and I want to just check in with everyone. How's that feeling? What's coming up for you? Let me know. I'm going to have some more water. The second sales sabotage that I see a lot, and I'm sure many of you can resonate with this as well, is the perfectionism. But it's actually, there's three parts to it. It's like a cycle, all right? Perfectionism, everything has to be perfect. If it's not perfect, then I can't do it. When is anything ever perfect? There's no such thing as perfect. Perfectionism, which often leads to over-delivery. So we give and give and give and give and give and over-deliver and over-deliver and give more and give more, which leaks into our client relationships, which leaks into our nervous system, which creates overwhelm. So we've got resistance, over-delivery, overwhelm. I'm overwhelmed. I can't handle it. It's too much. <laughs> That's a massive, massive resistance habit that I see all the time, all the time. Perfectionism, over delivery, overwhelm. And what happens is that it contributes us to lose momentum, all right? We, we get really caught up in, in how it should look. It should be perfect. It's not perfect. It could be better. That we go into over deliver. We do more, we do more, we do more, we deliver more, we offer more which leaks into our client relationships because our clients suddenly feel like a bit bombarded, a bit overwhelmed in, in their own right, which then leads, in, leads to us feeling overwhelmed. And then we lose momentum, right? We lose momentum. And the momentum that we generate is one of the most powerful things, something that takes time, takes time to build momentum. And we really, really want to make sure that we're being really careful with how we are, how we're cultivating our, our momentum. Because when we fall off the momentum train, it can take quite a while to get back on. And who's experienced this? Give me a like or a thumbs up if you've, or a heart if you've experienced this in your own business. I just want to make sure that we're still live because I'm still frozen over here. It's doing my head in. <laughs> so is this some, is this a cycle that you see, that you see in yourself? All right. A lot of my, my clients are really, really intelligent women, really intelligent women. And this can actually sometimes be a bit of a detractor because they believe that they should be able to figure this all out on their own. So they're resisting support, first of all. 
They're resisting asking for support and receiving it because I'm really smart. I should be able to do this myself. I should be able to do this on my own. <laughs> Guys, let me know if I'm still live with you. Someone say yes. Okay, there's a few likes. Good. There's a bit of a delay. Anyway, um, I should be able to do this all on my own, right? And that's, that's one big resistance pattern that we can get into as well. So is that you? Loving reminder. Some, we, we need support. We're not meant to do it on our own. We can't actually do it on our own. When we go down that pathway, we end up feeling really, really lonely in business, especially if we're building an online business. But back to the over, the perfectionism, over delivery and overwhelm. Okay, here we go. Jessica, I've totally experienced pumping out content for a month, got overwhelmed and then didn't post for months. Yeah, totally. I, I yeah, hundred percent, right? It's the, it's this energy. Yeah. So I do lots and then I crash and then I do lots and then I crash which leads to resentment. Why am I doing this in the first place? This is too hard. This is, you know, this is what contributes a lot of the time to the roller coaster ride of entrepreneurialism. There's many other things to that as well. Another big thing that we spoke about yesterday is not knowing how to package up your work and charge and, a char and charge appropriately for your services and for the service that you provide. So when we are only selling one, you know, single sessions or when we are undercharging and generally we're over delivering at the same time. And that's often what contributes to that roller coaster as well. But we're talking today about the, you know, the over deliver, the perfectionism leading to over delivery, leading to overwhelm, which is so, so big. So where are you on that cycle? Are you in that cycle or do you, have you been able to really ease into more um, fluidity? into more spaciousness, into more enoughness. Hey, who I am is enough. It doesn't have to be any better. It can't be any better. It's perfect exactly as it is. So this perfectionism is a sneaky form of scarcity mindset. Okay. Scarcity mindset. Think that comes from the perspective of I am not enough because it's not perfect enough. I'm not perfect enough. I need to be better. It needs to be better. It's not done. It should be better. I should be better. It's a driving, right? It's ruthless. We can be ruthless when we're in that. Who's experienced that? Let me know. So then shifting from scarcity, as that beautiful Brene Brown quote says, the opposite of scarcity is enoughness. Shifting into I am enough. This is enough. And I need to know when to stop. I need to know when to just hit that little red button and do a live and do one live video and not sit there recording 50,000 videos until I get the perfect one. Who has done that? I have done that many times. <laughs> That's why I love Facebook lives, right? Because it's one take. <laughs> it's so much faster and it's so much more efficient. Stephanie, for me, the more I charge, the more I think I have to deliver. That overwhelms me because I just don't want to give more than I uh, than I already do. And that's where I get, that's where I get unstuck. Do you mean that's where I get stuck? So once again, this is a perception. Yeah. And I'm, I want to ask you, is that coming from a scarcity mindset that says I'm not enough? So if I'm charging more, then that's going to be activating that within me in, in higher levels to higher degrees. I've done that, Natasha. Yep. And in many cases, you know, when we're working at a higher end with people, when we're charging more, we can think I need to do more, I need to give more, I need to offer more. But in many cases, people don't want that. People don't want an overload. This is what I'm talking about, perfectionism, or it might just be over-delivering, like perfectionism that comes from I'm not enough, which leads to over-delivery, over-delivery, over-delivery. I need to give more, I need to give more, which leads to overwhelm. Super, super common, super powerful. Way too many takes when not doing a live. Yeah, totally. Like we can sit there. I've sat there all afternoon <laughs> once, like a few years ago, all afternoon trying to get the perfect video. One take is so much more fun. Just click and go. I used to spend an hour or more to record one video. Exactly. So this is a, the second sales sabotage to be mindful of. All right. We need to recognize when we're losing, when we're contributing to loss of momentum. And the video was two minutes long. <laughs> so the third one, the third one that I see all the time that is really common, we're not judging it, we're just bringing it into our awareness, is avoidance, all right? Avoidance of the important things. 
This means busy work, doing the busy things that doesn't, that don't actually lead to cash, that don't lead to new clients, that don't lead to lead generation. Tinkering around on your website for two days doesn't lead to new clients generally. Like, you know, unless you're building a sales page and you have a real system to be, you know, creating lead generation, you know, there's so many, there's so much busy work that we can do in business that is actually sapping a huge amount of time. And when it comes, when it, when we really get down to it, it's coming from avoidance because we are avoiding the most important things like having conversations with our ideal clients, having conversations with prospects, actually speaking to the right people about working with you, inviting people in, extending that invitation to say, I would, I would love to invite you to come onto a sales call with me. Or you don't call it a sales call, obviously, but I'd love to invite you to work with me. So what's your experience with that? What is your busy work? Until you actually sit down and nail that down, your busy work, what is it that you do that keeps you really, really busy, but then when you get to the end of the day, you're like, what have I done? I haven't actually made, there hasn't been any change in my goals. There hasn't been any money coming in this week or, or, or this month because I've been too busy doing busy work. And this is avoidance, right? Powerful avoidance. Very clever avoidance because it keeps us thinking that we're doing stuff, but we're actually not being very efficient. We're not being very effective. We're spending all afternoon recording a two minute video <laughs> that takes a thousand takes, right? That's a very good example of busy work, okay? Avoidance. So then how do you deal with your avoidance? How do you deal with your resistance? You have a conversation with it. Hello, avoidance. Hello, avoidance, Annie. I can see that you're here. You're very powerful in my system. You're trying to obviously stop me from doing something. What is it that you're afraid of? What is it that you're trying to protect me from? And often it's like as simple as that. And until we can, you know, really isolate the fear that's underlying it, then we're just cycling back around. Sales sabotage, so, so common. So what are, you know, so essentially, your sales queen has, is, is beautifully able to have this kind of dialogue with the different parts that make her up, with her resistance habits. And not only that, but she actually anticipates resistance, okay? She knows that resistance is a normal thing and resistance is often an indicator that I'm about to break through into, a, into the next phase, into the next level. I can guarantee you, if you're experiencing big resistance in your business, then that is your upper limit working to keep you underneath it, to keep you underneath it, all right? So how do you then learn how to really work through that? You invite it in. It's okay, resistance. Let's have a chat. I was expecting you. Hey, welcome. What are you afraid of? What are you trying to protect me from? So I want to ask you, what, is, what are your particular resistance habits? Or resistance patterns what are your sales sabotages that you see yourself doing that are patterns for you let me know I think it's important to bring this level of awareness in and when it comes to really learning how to slay the sales sabotage this is the key this is the key it's being okay with resistance and it's having the dialogue so what I want to really invite you to consider is that Everything is happening exactly as it's supposed to. Your business is your soul work. It is designed to bring up all of your stuff, all of the shit, <laughs> all of the stuff. It's designed to bring it all up so that you can work through it, so that you can expand into it, right? So that you can expand into deeper levels of, of, of personal awareness. And then you can take that into your relationships with your clients. We have a beautiful, beautiful opportunity with our business to really execute our soul work. And so why, why are we always surprised when it brings up all of our stuff? It's perfectly okay. It's designed to do that. So be okay with it. Have a conversation. Have a dialogue. I'm just going to have a look here. I made myself rewatch my lives. Cringed though. It did some, and then did some kinesiology stress release. Clearing it and now find it quite easy. Yeah, it's such a perception shift. And then to actually be able to 
you know, bring ourselves to watch them. Well, I always have a bit of a mixed feeling about this. Sometimes I do it and I'm like, I'm not going to think about that because if I think about that, I'll spend all afternoon analyzing it and critiquing it. <laughs> Melissa, not feeling overwhelmed and taking one step at a time. Amazing. How powerful. So my role is to really help you to shift out of servitude and scarcity. That is one of my really one of my primary drivers, one of my sole missions is to help people to shift out of servitude and scarcity. How powerful is that when we are able to make that shift, when we are able to shift into this beautiful space of abundance, of enoughness and of sovereignty, right? I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a slave in the system. I, I don't have to do what everyone else is doing. I don't have to follow the status quo. I'm going to make a stand to do things a different way to do things my way and that is designed to bring up all of the things and that's perfectly okay right we need the support we need the confidence we need the trust we need to open up to receive it's all perfectly okay so I'm gonna just check in we're gonna be finishing up soon is there any anyone else that wants to have wants to put any final comments in Recognizing that your sales sabotages, they're all okay. It's something that your sales queen is perfectly adept at dealing with once she has this level of awareness. And once again, remembering that success is a muscle memory. We need to practice this over and over and over and over <laughs> and over and over. And that's sometimes the repetition is what's going to help to integrate it into our nervous system. So final thoughts, where are we at? How are we feeling? I'm gonna be extending an invitation to anybody who's interested. If you'd like to learn more about my work, if you'd like to learn more about Business Alchemy Mastermind, to drop in a, an emoji into the comments and we can have a little conversation. Absolutely no pressure, absolutely no, no pressure whatsoever. I do not do pressure-driven sales. But if you're starting to resonate with the way that I work and with the level of, um, of potency that I bring to the work that I do, then I want to invite you to reach out and to have a conversation to see what this might look like and to see if this might be a right fit, if we might be an aligned fit to work together. But like I said, absolutely no pressure. Resistance, radical compassion for our resistance parts. That's exactly, absolutely. So we're not just shoving them in the, in the shadow cupboard, yeah? So we're not just denying them, rejecting them, then they become, you know, the, the inner child having a temper tantrum, having an absolute temper tantrum. So that is all for me today. Your, your homework, your play work is going to be looking at your sales sabotages and to see like what are the things that you do that when you're about to break into a new level that keep you down, that keep you down. We are not able to break through those levels unless we have the awareness when we can bring, I want to invite you to have this conversation with your resistance habits, your resistance parts. What are you trying to protect me from? What are you afraid of? And when you feel that come up, you're being the observer. This is so powerful. This has such a, this creates such an amazing shift for people when we can bring this level of self-inquiry in. All right, everyone. It is 3.26 here in Canberra. It's time for me to log off. I'm so excited that you've all stuck around. It's been a really powerful journey and your sales queen has landed. She is here. She's ready to wield her energy. She's ready to wield that magnetic authenticity that we spoke about yesterday, that beautiful sacred sales spiral that she is a master of wielding. That's her genius, all right? So we're giving her permission. We're giving her permission to step in. All righty, take care, everyone. I'll speak to you tomorrow at 1, 1 p.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Time.